Mr. Vidal, at the time of this video, uh, is in custody, correct? That's correct, yes. Right. Um, I will play this video of uh, your interview with Mr. Vidal, and I have a couple of questions afterwards. We're having a conversation with Ms. Chayden about Ms. Graber, and not necessarily about what happened, but just a conversation with him about you know, some frustrations or a general awareness of her. Um, probably would have been about a month and a half before November 2nd, you would have brought up some, he brought up some frustrations to me, talking about how he was having a hard time, and he didn't feel like she was being very adequate or understanding. Okay. So, uh, so probably we grew in this movie. Okay. So, uh, a month and a half before November 2nd, so we put us in like September of 2021. What is that? Around or about that time? Yeah. Okay. And you said that he had disclosed to you some frustrations about her teaching style or grading, or what were some of the specific issues that he was having? Um, he just felt like she was very old school.
side of the fact that there, there could potentially be some bad consequences, legal consequences for, for being involved in something like that, you were close enough to change that it was worth it? I'll be honest, the consequences never even crossed my mind. Okay. What were the effects that had not been going on in Spanish? He had expressed a desire to me to go to boarding school in Spain, possibly for his, you know, to add to the college resume to make him look like a more appealing candidate. Um, and he was fairly sure that it wouldn't be possible if he would fail the class in Spanish. Did, were you aware of him having beef with anybody else in second grade? Um, he had a couple, he had a problem with a couple of kids. Um, Aaron, I can't remember his name. And Keegan. It's been it's been a long time since I've had one of those. Sure. He had a buddy. They like jack a couple things off him. I went on my own court to kind of ask him about what that was about, but I mean, he didn't ask me to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what anyone he currently, anyone else he currently had problems with at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what type of equipment did he use? Obviously, a baseball bat. Um, what type of equipment did you use? Stage out there or bring with you that day? Um, I don't know myself.
look out and him standing on the ISS trail with the gun in his hands. And he kind of gave me like a nod saying, here she comes. And I gave him the signal that it's all clear. And then she walked by and he hit him back in the head. And then I said, like, holy shit, make sure she's, sure she's dead. And so he hit her a couple more times. And then I dragged her off towards the access trail. And I wasn't sure whether she was alive or not. And I took the bat and I made sure that she wasn't alive or breathing. And then Chetty wasn't there at that moment. He was standing out on the trail. I guess making sure that nobody else is coming along. Um, and then eventually he did come back there. And I think he said, like, what was that? What was that noise? Did you, did you, did you hit her again? I was like, um, I said, I mean, yeah. I did, and then we grabbed her and we moved her towards like a strip of woods that said this path from the access trail. Um, and then that's where we left her. Um, I found her car keys, I handed them to Chayden. Yeah. <laughs> 